Hey everybody, it's me, Steve Schnee, the CD Junkie, and welcome to another episode of Exploring the Omnivore Universe. This is the show where I like to discuss all the latest releases on the Omnivore label. So we are going to focus on five brand new reissues by a gentleman by the name of Jonathan Richmond. And on this episode, I am joined by my friends, Ronnie Barnett. Steve. Be a little bit more excited, Ronnie. <laughs> yes. Thank you for having me, Steve. Let's explore the Omniverse, Omniverse Universe together. Yes. And Shall of we? course, here we have my friend, Rob the Waxed. I, I was coaxed here by under other means. I thought we were going to talk about something else. Oh. <laughs> I thought this was an intervention for you, Stephen. You, you're ruining my afternoon. Yeah, thank you. Well, you're ruining mine. So anyway, we are going to discuss now <laughs> Omnivore Records has reissued five Jonathan Richmond albums. And I think that these are some of, I mean, Jonathan Richmond is probably the most honest, sincere singer songwriter out there. You know exactly what's on his mind. He connects with the audience so well. He's an incredible songwriter. And we're going to start with uh, the album Jonathan Richmond and the Modern Lovers. This came out in 1976. There you go. Now, Rob, do you have the, the color available? Because yeah. I believe there's two variants, right? There's a black one, and uh, obviously this is orange. Well, I thought we were on StreamYard, which screws up my colors, but this is orange. You can okay. tell by my complexion <laughs> <it> matches. <laughs> now, the, the thing about this record is, is this followed... A, oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go, Ronnie. This followed the Modern Lovers album, and it was it, it was such a, a stylistic difference. But what a lot of people didn't realize is that the Modern Lovers album was actually recorded in like 71, 72, maybe even a track from 73. So that was already five years old by the time this album was released. And that first album, just called The Modern Lovers, uh, that's the album with uh, like uh, Pablo Picasso, Roadrunner, things like that. Those rock and roll, Velvet Underground influenced songs that uh, you know people were really into. And on this record, an incredible selection of songs with a whole different theme. Uh, now the album features things like Rock and Shopping Center. Uh, let me see, Back in the USA, I, I, I cover the Chuck Berry song, Important in Your Life, New England. Uh, Abominable Showman in the Market and, just, and so many other great songs uh, and it was a whole new band except for the drummer Dave Robinson. Steve and, I like that you said Abominable Showman. Yeah, it's Nick, some Nick Lowe uh, damage there. Okay, okay, okay. Abominable Snowman. Yeah. Did I say Abominable Showman? <laughs> gotcha. Yeah I know I love it. I love it. Yeah yeah. I, I, just... I, I practice saying that Nick Lowe album so many times. Okay it's Abominable Snowman in the Market. Didn't the, I might be wrong this. Didn't the uh, original the record of the original Modern Lovers actually come out after this one. I could be wrong. I think it came out a few months after. I could after. be wrong. I, um, okay. I can, I'm not up. I didn't read Wikipedia before we did this, so I don't know. Neither did I. So anyway, I, I could be. Totally but it was wrong. recorded earlier, as you say. Yeah, I don't mean. To, I don't I, mean to. I'm just entering an abominable show, man, into Wikipedia <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a wonderful album. Uh, it, it's still rock and roll. Uh, his, his band, like I said, the original lineup of the Modern Lovers included Jerry Harrison, who went on to the Talking Heads, and David Robinson on drums. Now, David Robinson is on this record, but after this, he went on to play with the Cars. Now, the band actually was uh, Greg Curley Karanin, I, I believe is the pronunciation. But then there was also, uh, you know, he was on bass. There was also Leroy Radcliffe on guitar and vocals. And like I said, David Robinson. Now, I think that both uh, both the addition of Curly and uh, Leroy Radcliffe really, you, you know, with their wonderful backing vocals, uh, really uh, helped the album. And and this album is really opens up. Uh, what are your thoughts on it, Ronnie? First off, I got to say when I when I first, you know, as a kid growing up, I read the music press from a young age, and I'd, I'd always read the name Modern Lovers, right? And um, we're gonna get to the live one. The first one I actually heard was a live one, but I was like. Um, I was shocked that it was not, that it wasn't exactly rock and roll. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. like you say, they do still look like a rock band on the back of this one. Uh, that would, that would change after this. Um, and the cover definitely, uh, is not exactly a hard rock and roll, a stylish model shot of Jonathan, which is, I love the cover. Don't get me wrong. But, um, 
I gotta I mean, say this this record this record does set the blueprint for the rest of his career. Let's face it. Where the yeah. original Modern Lovers are, is a thing unto himself. This, you know, has the acoustic stuff. It's, it, like you say, started with the call and response, backing vocal thing, um, and, and the uh, instrumentals, you know, all the stuff that he still does to this day. He was trying to appeal to a different audience with this album. Yeah, um, and also the drumming. David Robinson's drumming is more kind of, even though it's not over the top or anything, it, it is more rock drumming yeah. than, than would happen after this. Yeah. Rob, what are your thoughts on the album? Well, would you say he was trying to appeal to a different demographic or he was more showing his true self? Because if I compare this, because I had the I had the advantage to listen to all these in a period a short period of time. Mm -hmm. And my sense is that it I think more to a little bit what Ronnie was saying, sets the tone for how he did write. And and everything I've been exposed to him for my first exposure was something about Mary is in a kind of set the tone as a guy who tells stories, but with a humorous slant. Right. Mm -hmm. Does this make sense? Yeah. To you? Yeah. yeah. He actually had to yeah. invent this demographic to be honest with these records. Yeah. yeah I, I totally yeah, agree I, with that. Cause a lot of people will say that they're geared towards kids, but they're really not. I mean, uh, you know, on one hand, you know, uh, you know, we'll talk about you know some of the stuff on the on the next few albums. They're they're very childlike, but to me, they're innocent and they're filled with wonder. And it's almost like he went right back to uh, songwriting 101. It's like, what do I, you know? What did I want to uh, uh, write about? You know, when I was twelve or fifteen or seventeen or twenty, and touching on on a lot of these things that a, a lot of us grew up with. Uh, you know, remember on like later albums, he'd talk about um, uh, driving their uh, bikes past the root beer stand, purple squirt gun in my hand. He was still talking about stuff like that, but it's just pure innocence. It's not him goofing around. It's, it, you know, and it's not him saying, oh, yeah, you know, I want to be the next um, Raffi or Sharon Lois and Bram and I want to <laughs> sing to kids. Uh, he's he's just being honest and, and singing about what he wants to sing about chewing gum wrappers, jeans. You know, these are things that have come up in his lyrics for years. It's amazing. Rob, you had something to say? I, I kind of feel like the uh, abominable snowman is more kind of poking fun at the norms of society. That's what I get from him. I mean, I have a humorous slant on everything. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's the sugar he's giving you to spoon feed you with his, is kind of it, it exists it's not for me or i see the pleasant i see the you know what i mean i don't yeah know. all this would not work if the melodies were not i, okay. I mean he yeah, really yeah. he really got melodic uh at this point right i mean yeah the the, the infectious mel the melodies are infectious and i'm hey i just want to say before we move on and this is exploring the on omnivore universe God, i have a hard time saying that um <laughs> i want to say this is a nice touch of all the reissues that they did the inner sleeve Oh yeah. As a nod to the berserkly inner sleeves, you know, with these colors. Yeah. And everything. Yeah. So uh nice touch there, Greg. And then you know, you got the Envoy records and the muffs are included on here too. I just want to see. <laughs> right. See, yeah. and and they're similar <laughs> to the um berserkly labels, you know, with the colors or, or with the fonts and everything. Now let's move on to the next album. Now, this is the album that I got into Jonathan Richmond on. Ronnie might remember this. Rob, I don't know if you would. Now, in 1977, Berserkly Records put out a four-track EP that featured songs from their four artists, which was Jonathan Richmond and the Modern Lovers, The Rubenews, Earthquake, and Greg Kinn. Now, that is my first introduction to all four of those bands. It had Ice Cream Man, which was off this album. And the first time I heard it, I go, that's freaking ridiculous. It's, it's <laughs> goofy, right? So I showed it to a couple people, and they're going, yeah, that's goofy. Within, gosh, two or three people I was showing it to, I was realizing the pure genius of it. You know, it it just depends on your perception. So I'm 14 years old and hearing Ice Cream Man, to me, it was kind of goofy. But then it just became absolutely wonderful. Now, the thing about this record is it sounds like it was recorded with a microphone in the middle of the room and the band <laughs> just playing live. Yeah, this is the birth of lo-fi, this record. Yeah, I mean, it really, yeah. it really, and that said, the vocals are like underneath the instruments too, even. I mean, it's, uh, 
And it's funny that it's called rock and roll with the modern lovers. And look at, look how they're dressed on here. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. <laughs> and, and there's a stand up bass and yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. And it's, and it's whimsical. Uh, I want to say childlike, uh, but it's, it's, it's a pure and honest record. And sometimes you have to get past all of that. Um, you know, I mean, you know, you can sit around and, and, and talk about your deep purples or your Charles Mingus or, you know, all the, you know, the, the serious things that, you know, people talk about. And then you listen to the, the modern lovers and it takes you right. It, it, it's primitive. It's primal, but it's not primal like the cramps were. It's primal. It, it, it's just stripping rock and roll of its, its um, aggression and presenting it more in a upbeat uh, happy way. Uh, and of course, you know, Ice Cream Man is the song on there that, uh, you know, that was my introduction. But there's also uh, uh, like Fly Into the Mystery or, or Afternoon, uh, which are great songs. And, um, uh, you know, and then they do Wheels on the Bus, which is a unique interpretation that they change it just enough to reflect later Jonathan Richmond, uh, you know, where he would go uh, in the future. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on this album? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, you uh, you pretty much nailed it there. I, I also just want to comment, you know, there's like, I want to say four instrumentals on here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and also Ice Cream Man was my introduction too, but it was a, it was a live version, but I, I guess we'll get to that and I'll give my yeah. thoughts on that then. Yeah. But um, yeah, you, you nailed it. Kind, it kind of refines um, the first record to that, to that real, I know we'll keep using this word childlike, but it kind of refines it down on this record. It, it, it's more focused, even though it, do, it doesn't sound as slick, if you will. Whereas the first record, maybe the band sounds like they weren't around that long before they made the record, if that makes mm -hmm. any sense. Mm -hmm. this, this one sounds like the band kind of kind of were hitting their stride. Um, that said, I wish it was recorded a little better, but it's, yeah. still, it's still charming. It's still, it's still great. Yeah, it's a very charming record. Yeah, and it sounds like they are on the same wavelength as Jonathan. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It sounds like he could steer them any, any direction, you know, like, like, like he probably did live and would steer them in a direction and they would follow because they knew that, you know, they understood where he was coming from and where he was headed to. Uh, Rob, and again, you could tell by the outfit, how they look like a band in these, yeah. these outfits. Yeah. So. <laughs> Rob. Uh, yeah, I wanted to point out to the colored vinyl oh, is red. That's beautiful. Red. Yeah, it's a nice um, ruby red. Uh, but, what's, um, on, what's on the other side of the uh, create, devour, repeat? Is it? Oh, it's just the uh, same oh, okay. thing. Okay. Okay. These sleeves are the same. Okay. The Omnivore catalog. Yep. Um, the one thing I'll say is my impression of the album is the musicianship. I think you were pointing that out. Mm. Felt like they, they were tight. They're playing well um, on top of his unique and his st stylized delivery and singing. I felt underneath him, he was had a solid band kind of yeah. reiterating what Ronnie said. So yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and that was my introduction to, to Jonathan. Uh, so 1977, like I said, I was 14 years old and I really didn't like, like, like I, I started buying his records and I didn't really fall deeply in love with the music of Jonathan Richmond until 1985 with the uh, release of Rock and Romance, which is the only album that's never come out on CD. You know, when I went back and, and, and re-listened to these albums, you know, back, you know, way back when, because I listened to these albums a lot, uh, uh, because once you connect with an artist, it's like, you know, what else is there to discover? And... Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you can go round and round and listen to, uh, you know, Ice Cream Man or a bottle. I can't even say it now. You know that <laughs> no man in the market thing. Um, <laughs> and then you 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 connect with it more. You understand it more. You 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 realize where he's coming from musically and lyrically. So um, uh, that was always a great thing. Always going back and re-listening to the Jonathan Richmond and the Modern Lovers albums. Now let's go Rock on. Rock and roll. I am an absolute non-fan of live albums boy <laughs> do i not like live albums 
at all. Fragile Do you like five alive. albums, Stephen? <laughs> Wings you look over like America. The guy like five albums. Nothing, right? You look like the guy who records the concert secretly. <laughs> <laughs> but this one, holy cow, this is an absolute gem of an album because it combines, in my opinion, the 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 more carefree flowing um feel of the second album with sort of the uh better production and the 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 you know the clearer instrumentation of uh the first album and plus it was the first album that uh asa brepter appeared on right that's right that's and right. and and for for anybody that doesn't realize this but uh okay yeah yeah there you go asa and a uh, leroy radcliffe actually went on to uh, be members of uh, Robin Lane and the Chartbusters. And, yes. uh, you know, both of them uh, wonderful musicians. And unfortunately, both of them have, have passed away. This is such a great record to remember them by. Morning of Our Lives on this album is, in my opinion, one of Jonathan Richmond's finest songs. It is so incredible, so inspiring. Uh, and gosh, I think more than half this album is all previously unreleased stuff. So you're hearing stuff here for the first time. So uh, and and it and it's like what a six or eight minute version of the Ice Cream Man <laughs> or Ice Cream Man. Yes, but, and that that was my first introduction to John, hearing John Richard was that live version, and I was like, what? I I didn't get it at all as a uh, twelve year old because um, you know it, it, it's, the the ending is legendary, right? Yeah, it doesn't well, end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just keeps it just keeps going. It keeps it's stopping going. and going and going and going. And and um, like you say, I I got yeah, a lot of this uh, kind of like uh, intensities and ten cities is uh, new new songs on a live album. Uh -huh. so there are some you know Egyptian reggae's on here and stuff. Um, I just want to say too, what a what a a wild uh, decision to put out a live album again with this cover. And this is like late seventy seven. This is like when. When punk is coming, starting to come on. Yeah. What, what you're hearing about John, the modern lovers, the original band being influential on punk and all that. And then, I mean, look at this cover. I mean, this, this made solid August night cover. look like, you know, deep purple yeah. to bring them <laughs> up again. I mean, I mean, uh, you know, um, and then also it, this is just modern lovers build on here, which is a nice touch. I oh, think. that's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Rob, um, what are your thoughts on the album? Again, I guess it's my job to point out yep. this oh. is on the nice orange no. vinyl. Um, this, to me, solidifies who he is and how he connects with his audience. Listening to this makes me feel like if you didn't know from listening to his other albums how he could in inspire and elicit responses from people, this does. Because... I think one thing I like what he does, because I've watched a few live uh, videos on, on YouTube of him, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is I like how he kind of teases the audience a little bit as like sort of like, this is how you're supposed to react to this song. And this is supposed to how you clap to the song. And mm -hmm. this is how you, you, you know, I feel like he does a lot of, I'm almost feeling like I've seen him go kind of like this to the audience and you can feel it. When you listen to this, I yeah. feel he, his showmanship is really, uh, I, you know how you, when you see a band live, you go, oh, I get it. Mm -hmm. But I never got it by listening to their stuff, their studio albums. I feel like you get, by listening to this, you get that. You don't even have to see him. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. 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 yeah and, that's, and That's my general impression of the album. The thing I always stress when I talk to people about Jonathan Richmond, and trust me, I try to talk to people about Jonathan Richmond as much as I can. Um, it's his honesty. A lot of people will, you know, edit themselves and say, no, let's turn Ice Cream Man into a song about the war, whatever. And no, Jonathan's going to say, no, I want to sing about the Ice Cream Man. And um, <laughs> I know people are probably just going, gosh, they keep talking about the Ice Cream Man. Um, but that's, like I said, it's one of those songs. It attracted me to him. In '77, uh, uh, because of that EP, and the same thing with Ronnie. Uh, now, Ro Rob, when, when you're first hearing that, you know what's going through your mind when you're hearing a song like "Ice Cream Man." 
or abominable feel, snowman in the market? I feel like it. It's a he would go back to the the, the having a melody and a catch. Mm -hmm. I feel like it, it for me it could have been interchangeable. He could have been talking about the mailman, any man. You know? Yeah, mm -hmm. but he could have been just talking about anything. I think what is very distinctive about him is his cadence and his hooks. Yeah, and and in a good way, because in all intents and purposes, this guy should not be a, a performer. He should not be popular. He should definitely not have an audience, but he's contagious. And I think when you, Ice Cream Man's a very good example because if you didn't speak English and didn't understand what that meant, you would get it. Do you know mm -hmm, what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. First off, if you play any of these records, no one will ever be able to pick out when they were recorded. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, you play timeless. these for anybody that's never heard them before. Timeless. They will not, they will not pin, I guarantee they won't. But also, you just know that, like, when they played concerts, it was not necessarily an, ador an adoring crowd. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they must have faced going out and playing, oh, yeah. to say it yet again, Ice Cream Man in front of a rock crowd. Um, there's no way that wasn't a difficult thing. Um, it sounds like it wouldn't be, but, but, but believe me, I'm sure it was. And, yeah, um, they probably treated him like, like, like they treat Corey Feldman these days. Yeah, and, you know, Jonathan was just... <laughs> doing his thing and not and just indifferent to any booing or whatever but see that fact, i'm sorry Rodney, in fact ahead. that reminds me steven next video can we do it about Corey feldman okay we will all right hopefully omnivore releases his, his back catalog um <laughs> but see that was the great thing about jonathan is that he did what he wanted to do and he still does what he wants to do um and uh it didn't matter that people were booing. It didn't matter that the critics weren't getting it. What mattered is that he was creating this art that that he loved to create, and and he was going out and doing, and he was constantly on tour. Uh, you know, yeah. you know, you Still talk is. about yeah, yeah, Modern Lovers Live, an incredible live album. More than half the album is uh, previously unreleased songs, like uh, I'm a Little Dinosaur, and I, I mentioned earlier Morning of Our Lives, which is just beautiful from beginning to end. You know, even like, you know, Asa D sharp and Leroy and their harmonies. And uh, it's just, it's just absolutely amazing. So uh, anything else you guys want to add about that? I album? will say that's the uh, live is my second favorite of these albums. Okay. And I will add that Asa did shave the mustache after that record. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's head into 1979 with back in your life, which this is credited to Jonathan Richmond and the modern lovers, but it seems like, the Modern Lovers, and and when I refer to Modern Lovers, I'm talking about Leroy Asa and D Sharp and Jonathan. Seems like they they may only be on about half the album because a lot of it's really yeah. acoustic and laid back. Um, yeah, this I think is is an album that is is, is even a little bit more emotional. Um, it you know it's uh, you know I don't want to say like you know this is his serious um, pretentious album or whatever because he's still but. I mean, you're listening to to some incredible songs on this record, uh, you know, such as Affection is an incredible song. Uh, I remember mm -hmm. playing that uh, back in your life is, mm -hmm. you know, it, it seemed like where the others were um, more about just general things. This seemed more like a personal album to me. And, yeah, um, no, absolutely. And in things like Affection, you can hear a little bit of the original Modern Lovers. Yeah. In, a, in a song like that, I think, in yeah. the attitude and stuff. But then you have back at the title track, which is a, just a, an amazing, beautiful love song, right? Yeah. I mean, that's that's one of the things we love about John. Like, he just, he'll do whatever, an instrumental and dance or whatever, and then he'll just break your heart and get you with just this beautiful, soft, you know, love song. Yeah, absolutely. I think that um, it it's really hard to say which, which uh one is my favorite out of these. And I think that Rob had asked me uh, a couple of weeks back, what was my favorite? This was the one that immediately came to mind. Uh, and, but it changes every day, you know, back in your life by Jonathan Richmond, the modern lovers is an incredible record. Uh, and I know that I, I always call Jonathan Rich, Richmond albums incredible because really they are uh, Rob. What does the vinyl look like on this? Oh, Green. that's beautiful. Em Emerald. Beautiful. Yeah. 
Also, Rob, we, we should ask you why you went for the uh, the, the deluxe poly inner sleeve for the first album only. I know I picked uh, up on that. Okay, you caught me. Yeah, <laughs> I ran out of them, and I just got <laughs> okay. it yesterday. I just got some more, so I'll make okay. sure beautiful <laughs> albums are put into their sleeve. One thing that's a good segue because one thing I want to point out is how well at least the vinyl is mastered, how well it yeah. sounds, and yeah. they're actually really good pressings. You know, there's a knock against the colored vinyl, and it might be a little noisy, but these sound really good. Very, in fact, we'll talk about, I have a, an original I'm about to show with another album, and uh, they're on par with uh, that uh, OG pressing, I will say. So that's- Yeah, yeah no, no, these days they can, these days they can make colored vinyl records sound good, right? As we, yeah, yeah, yeah. we as, yeah. as least me and you know, Rob, not Steve, but- um, Yeah, no, I wouldn't know. Yeah. I don't yeah, that whole yeah. colored vinyl sounds inferior. That that's 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 over. That's that's over. Yeah, yeah and well, I'm not, and I'm, I'm not saying there's not crappy sounding ones because they, but it's all in the mastering, to, right? It's all in the pressing. Yeah. And just to address a question that Stephen asked me before we went live, is that hole is not for you to look at your friends through, Stephen? It actually goes on a device that holds it in place. Oh, okay. <laughs> so look, for the first 27 years of my life, I collected vinyl religiously. I bought more vinyl than probably. Uh, uh, both of you um, combined, well, no, not Ronnie, but you know, <laughs> definitely 10 times more than, than Rob has ever seen in his life. But for the last, you know, 30 years or whatever, it, it's been, or 32 years, it's been CD. I don't want to go back because I don't have enough room. So you guys can show the vinyl and I'll be happy to show the CDs because they sound oh. just as good. But those albums, but the vinyl does sound good. It sounds really good. It does. Um, you know, I, I, I don't like to say things that I was pleasantly surprised, but it sounded very, just even for a vinyl record and for, especially for someone like uh, Jonathan Richmond, where the, it's not overproduced, right? Yeah. There's very little room for, for mistakes, you know, when it comes to pressing a pretty straight, uh, um, you know, four instruments or, you know, mm -hmm. and a voice. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's good. It sounds really good. So that's another aspect of about these reissues. Yeah. Now the last thing I want to say about this album, uh, it, if I didn't mention it before, it is a rock and roll record uh, through part of it, but there's also a lot of acoustic stuff on, on the album. So that's why I say it doesn't sound like maybe the, the um, modern lovers were as involved with this record, uh, but I could be absolutely wrong. Um, and also, I also want to mention that, None of these CDs have bonus tracks. These are uh, released uh, exactly how Jonathan had intended back in the day. I wanted to mention that. Um, and they sound absolutely wonderful. Uh, and it's great to revisit them because, you know, I still listen to Jonathan Richmond, uh, not just these reissues, but uh, his back catalog. And it's always a wonderful thing. I, I just want to say the, mm -hmm. the reissues not having bonus tracks or not having liner notes. That was Jonathan's decision with these. Yeah. So that's how yeah. he wants them. So yeah, I'm yeah. always all for liner notes and extra stuff, but yeah. Yeah. He didn't want them that way. We're going to talk about one more album. Now those four albums originally came out on the Berserkly label, incredible label that Jonathan Richmond and the modern lovers left um, that label. They signed with Sire and the fifth release that Omnivore is releasing. Hopefully it's not the last. Uh, but the fifth release is Jonathan Sings, which is another amazing record. I like Rob's insight, so I'm going to let him offer some insight. But I will say this is the album with the original version. No, Ronnie, I'll let you have some insight. But Rob, was, <laughs> uh, but um, well, there's, yeah. but but I I wanted to mention a, in particular this is the first appearance of the song that summer feeling, which is yet another incredible amazing Jonathan Richmond song. It has gone down in legend as one of his best. And this is the first album where it appears. Now, Ronnie, before I go to you, I really liked the angle that uh, Rob told me just uh, a little while before we started recording. So what's your thoughts on the Jonathan Sings album? Well, the one thing we need to mention about the Jonathan Sings is it's not released yet. It comes out on Record Store Day, Black Friday. Mm. It's already been announced. Yeah, I know. So... With a wide so, release after that, with the black final. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, and yeah. the CD. Yeah. Yeah. And just before I talk about it, it is a kind of peach color. Oh, wow. So, 
Okay, so that's the one. Oh, uh, let me. He found a sleeve for that one. Yeah. Yeah. And it looks like it's a sire, <laughs> like like a, a oh, omnivore's yeah, yeah, version yeah, of sire. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. 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 It's omnivore's version of sire, which yeah. I actually have a OG uh, promo copy. So there you can see how similar they are. So my take on this, which I it's love. my favorite one out of my favorite out of the five. The reason it's my favorite is on this album, he has backing vocalists of, of two female ladies. Is that how you talk about them? And um, probably yeah, not. <laughs> two, two nice, two nice ladies. Um, I feel like what it does is it's sort of a Greek chorus for him. And I feel like it, it sets this tonality because to me, it's the most emotional out of all of these. It, I feel like it's him telling a story on a roller coaster of emotions. Mm -hmm. And I really connects with it because of this back, the backing vocals and mm -hmm. the response to what his singing. And I think they kind of help set the tone in the story he wants to tell all throughout the album. It is, I would say, out of all the albums, it is a solid from beginning to end album. Mm -hmm. It is, if one song was missing from it, I don't think it would have the um, impact yeah. uh, that it has. So it really is my favorite of all of all of them. Yeah. Yeah. And I will say, by the way, this was a whole new lineup of the uh, Modern Lovers, except Curly had come back from uh, uh, Curly, who had been on the first couple uh, albums that we talked about here. He actually came back to the lineup, but the rest of the band was all new to uh, the Modern Lovers. Ronnie, what are your thoughts on Jonathan Sings? Uh my initial thought is that we shouldn't even be grouping this this one in with the other ones. Like we only are because they came they're coming out this year, but this is like four or five years later. I mean, it's like a whole, it's a different thing. Like he yeah. Yeah. he stepped it up, and, and like like Rob said, I mean this 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 is my favorite record. Like maybe out of all his records, um, and because it, it's rock solid, and the songwriting takes a giant step on this one. There's yeah. no there's no like Rob kind of said. There's no throwaways. There's no instrumentals there's no amazing grace you know there's no i mean and, and again incorporating incorporating the female vocal like like you know the neighbors is incredible mm -hmm. um i could go on and on about every song but i mean um really it's a whole it's a whole different thing we should we should you know there's a berserkly original era of, of that band and then you know this moves on to the next the next phase and um yeah. you know it's like there's like full instrumentation on here i don't know it's it's um it's incredible yeah new label um that only lasted one record but what a record yeah, i mean new energy yeah. but it's still honest and straightforward i yes. mean there's you know there's a song on here called not yet three which yes uh which is you know about uh kid you know being not yet three might be um, my favorite yeah. yeah and uh again honesty truth because jonathan is of the earth he is somebody who you could run across in a 7-Eleven or uh, at the beach and instantly, you know, relate. He, you know, he's still in love with, with this world. You know, he's writing songs filled with wonder, you know, and filled with like excitement, like, wow, what's around the corner or, or look at that or look at this. And that's what I love about his songwriting. It's, it's just straightforward, no filters. If, if you haven't heard Jonathan, if no one's ever heard Jonathan Richmond, start with this one. And if you don't like this one, then you don't like Jonathan Richmond. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's, that's, that's my take. Yeah. At the end of this, by the way, uh, which is just going to be a few more minutes from now, I'm going to put a little medley. So, so you can hear at least one or two songs from each of the albums that we've just discussed. Yeah. Now, I didn't, uh, I, didn't pre I didn't prepare my singing voice. <laughs> <laughs> But do you guys have uh, anything else you want to add about Jonathan Sings? Buy it. My favorite album. <laughs> my favorite of all of the albums. Uh, now, apart from Jonathan Sings, which comes out on Record Store Day, does anybody know the exact date of Record Store Day? 25th. Okay, 25th. Okay. Which November. Is... Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. We assume everybody watches these things immediately, but they don't. Yeah. Uh, November 25th, <laughs> uh, uh, 2022 is is when this comes out. Uh, now these other four are currently available and they yeah. are available, I think in, in, um, of course on CD, uh, and I think two variations of vinyl, you get a colored vinyl or, uh, um, uh, a regular black vinyl. Yeah. 
black, not yeah. black and white, black. And like, and right. like I said, the 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 uh, the big really or the the street date for Jonathan Sings is like two weeks after Record Store Day for the CD and the the black and the black vinyl. Yeah. yeah. So definitely, this is something to uh, check out. But I did want to say he's still around. Uh, and these are not available on uh, Omnivore, but you can still buy new Jonathan Richmond CDs off his Bandcamp page. Uh, he just put out this one, uh, and it's called uh, Want to Visit My Inner House. He put out this uh, this year, and it's him and Tommy Larkin. And it's produced by Jerry Harrison, who, of course, uh, was in Talking Heads, but he was also in the original Modern yes. Lovers. So. Uh, and you didn't and, mention Ernie Brooks before, but Ernie Brooks was the uh, bass player in the in the original Modern Lovers. Oh, that's right. I apologize. I was. He went on to have it. He had a band called The Necessaries. Made an album, Sire UK. Oh, anyway, awesome. this is yeah. deep nerd here. Can I say yeah. one other thing before you close out? Um, oh, absolutely. I just want to say um, I got to know Leroy Radcliffe during the last three years of his life. Mm -hmm. um, I played music with him and Robin Lane. Um, this is during the period where Kim was sick and no one knew Kim was sick. And um, it was very therapeutic for, for all of us because Robin and Leroy were a couple in the chart bus. They had a bad breakup. They hadn't spoken in 20 whatever years. And I got to see them repair their relationship. I got to see Leroy get to know his daughter who he didn't know really get to get to meet his granddaughter, watch those two just, just hash out old stories. And, and, and Leroy was the best. And, um, and I asked him many questions about the modern lovers and I, and um, I just want to say this, but the, the, the main thing I asked him was like, what is that? Is that really Jonathan? I mean, is he, is he really that guy? And uh, he told me a story about Jonathan coming to his door one night in his underwear to get a cup of milk or a cup of sugar or something. And uh, I don't know. He, he was genuinely, he's genuinely that the guy that we know from these records. That's not yeah. an act. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah and so and, Leroy, rest in peace. Yeah. Rest in peace, Leroy and Asa. Uh, and Asa. And, uh, do you have any <laughs> last thoughts, uh, uh, Mr. Waxed? Uh, no, thank you for having me. And um, it was a pleasure to talk about Jonathan Richmond and through this process, learn a lot more about him. Ronnie and I got into Jonathan Richmond. You know, we've been listening to him, what, 45 years, 44, 45 years. And, you know, so we know these albums backwards and forwards. And Rob is kind of new to Jonathan. And I love the fact that he was like kind of hearing them for the first time and experiencing for the first yeah. time. You know, I'm sure that he's going to go back to them later and love i'm not saying he doesn't love him now but the more you listen to jonathan the more you appreciate it yeah i didn't feel again I, ronnie had mentioned this earlier i didn't feel like it was a timed i wasn't hearkening back to a period of time it's yeah. not dated so yeah. yeah yeah it's actually wonderful he's a, he's an artist that everybody should be listening to i don't want to say he's he's not for everybody because i believe he's for everybody it's just that people have to sort of open themselves up and and realize hey you know what there's more to life than the beatles and mariah carey there is <laughs> yeah, there what? Is. i've what? been trying to convince I'm, ronnie I'm that for here. years yeah i know yeah, yeah. <laughs> so but anyway Mimi? thank you you mean me me <laughs> also thank you very hats much. off hats off to omnivore records for once again uh you know they, they give us great music of all types and uh yeah here we go again what a great what a great batch of uh uh records and cds absolutely thank you Thank yeah. you, Rob, and thank you, Ronnie, and thank you, everybody, for watching this episode of Exploring the Omnivore Universe. All of us recommend you check out the Jonathan Richmond reissues, either on CD, vinyl, or do what Ronnie does and get them both. We really appreciate you taking the time to watch, and uh, we will see you next time on Exploring the Omnivore Universe. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>